Easter wouldn't be Easter without chocolate. We eat more chocolate at Easter than any time of the year. Uh, not that we do badly the rest of the year. 9.4 kilos of chocolate a year per person. That's two of these bars a week. That's more than the French, the Germans, the Spanish, more than anyone in Europe. It's not the amount of chocolate that we eat. It's the type of chocolate that is frightening. It isn't really chocolate. Here is a collection of Britain's best-selling bars, but not one of them you could really call a chocolate bar. It's confectionery. It's sugar, vegetable fat, with a thin coating of chocolate on the outside. You know, chocolate, to me, is... That, you know, there's got to be some purity in it. Chocolate is, is a mixture of some fine cocoa sourced around the world, some great sugar and a little cocoa butter. And, and that is chocolate, something pure with flavour. Chocolate that tastes of chocolate, real chocolate. For 15 years, Willie Harcourt Coos has single handedly pursued his dream of producing the finest chocolate in the world. He's grown cacao on a plantation in the heart of the Venezuelan jungle. He's restored antique chocolate equipment to set up a small factory in Devon, and now he's about to take on his biggest challenge ever to create a popular chocolate bar for sale in the high street to rival the products of the big commercial giants. And these are my first bars. It's a bit like having a baby. <laughs> it's a massive financial and emotional enterprise for one man and his family. That's my future. That's the future chocolate bar flavour. dream, Willie will have to convince an entire nation to change our taste in chocolate, to abandon the sweet and milky stuff in favour of what he says is the real thing. But can he do it? First of all, he needs to test his plan on people who haven't had their taste buds distorted by decades of overly sweet confectionery. Chocolate's supposed to be something you, you, you buy to give your kids a treat, but it's not. You give it to them while you read the newspapers and they go ballistic with the sugar. So he's off to Spain, to Barcelona, where the chocolate industry is alive and well. Most of the popular chocolate sold in Britain contains more vegetable fat, milk and sugar than they deem civilised here. So much so that for years Europeans campaigned to prevent British producers from using the name chocolate on the wrapper. And what do we do about it? It goes back to don't talk bad, but you really got, someone's got to stand up and say, this isn't chocolate. And much of what we buy as chocolate in the UK couldn't be sold under that name here. EC regulations mean it would have to be called family milk chocolate. The recent explosion of boutique chocolate shops in Barcelona makes Willie optimistic that there is a market for a more pure product. So the most popular? The most popular, in fact, at the 100%. <laughs> and there's none. <laughs> yeah, no. It just and ran that out. Is that popular? Yeah, because, Amazing. you know, people now, every time more, they take care of their health. Yeah. And, uh, well, they come in, come in, come in here to eat, and they're asking for this uh, kind Amazing. of cacao. I think every time more people here are starting to, to learn and to know and like the hardest and stronger chocolate, right. stronger cacao. Right, OK. Yeah. This one came from all the product. It came from Venezuela. We have eight collections in this first. Uh... That's Venezuelan. Venezuela, yeah. Mm. It's a bit more tasty. You've done the exact opposite. Yeah. You know, you've taken the sugar out and you've got the cacao. We're on the reverse, sadly. I'm almost embarrassed to ask you this after, after tasting some of your fantastic chocolate. But <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I wondered if you'd, um, if you'd just try this chocolate and tell me what you think. This is, this is basically uh, what people think chocolate is in England. Well, 
when you're used to at this our chocolates, it's very difficult to eat this kind of chocolate. Right. Even you okay. can call it chocolate because yeah. it's mostly, I think probably milk, sugar, yeah. and fat. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anything like that anywhere, to be honest with you. I mean, it really is. It's like a chocolate paradise. It's quite incredible. I mean, they've got, they've got, seem to have covered everything. I, I think what's keenly different is they've got all these uh, percentage bars that they make themselves. I, I've never seen that. You see lots of chocolate shops, but you never see that. And she really knew her stuff. It was great to meet someone like that. And what was really interesting is, so there I am. And what have they got? They've got a picture of Chihuahua, which is the farm that borders with me, my neighbour in Venezuela. And then they've got the picture of my neighbour, the representative of Valrona, on the front of one of their other bars. I mean, it's incredible. All the pictures seem to come from my neck of the woods. And that just tells you something about the quality of my chocolate. It does. Willie has seen enough to convince him that there can be a market for a new appreciation of real chocolate. But is it really plausible that one man can take on a whole industry and prove it to an entire nation? The last year has brought a lot of changes for Willie. The business of producing 100% cacao bars for cooking has taken almost all of his time. The tiny, wonky chocolate factory he built with his own hands is ticking over and his bars are selling steadily. At home, the kids are growing fast. Evie, now five, is as mad about chocolate as ever. William, now eight, is growing up alarmingly like his father. And Sophia, all grown up at ten, will soon be off to secondary school. And there's Tanya, as ever the linchpin in the whole affair. Well, I think since we set up the factory, it's been pretty crazy because it took off, properly took off. And uh, we had no body and... No, really, we didn't really have the place sorted at all for that kind of instant success. I thought, probably thought things were going to get better, you know, and have more time. But what's happened is I've been sort of a victim of my own success. Willie thinks he's not working when he's on the phone or on his computer. That's not working. <laughs> so, you know, even if he comes home early, which is nine at night, he's then on his computer for two or three hours. With the tiredness and exhaustion, he also can't... Um, he just can't articulate himself anymore at night. You make your own opportunities. I've made an opportunity here for all of us, not just for me, for the whole family. And, you know, it is a one-man show. There isn't the money to pay other people. And, yes, I do get up and I do go to work before the kids come down for breakfast sometimes. So sometimes I don't see them in the morning or the evening. But, you know, it's not forever, you know, is it? It's just to get this project off the ground. But if Willie's new chocolate is to have a prayer competing against Britain's favourite bars, he needs a unique selling proposition. If he can prove his wild personal theory that pure cacao is good for you, maybe he'd be on to a winner. If Willie is right, Britain is a nation whose taste buds have been distorted by having too much milk, sugar and fats in our chocolate. But can he really persuade us to be more like Europeans and re-educate our palates? He needs to test out his idea on some true Brits, so he's placed an ad in the local paper for self-proclaimed chocoholics. So for the last week I've been trying to get together a real bunch of chocoholics down to the factory to educate them about what chocolate really is. You know, this mission, there's a mission to educate people about flavour, you know, um, and what real chocolate's all about, which is, which is ultimately flavour and healthiness and all the other things attached to it. OK, so I'm preparing an ice cream for a bunch of self-confessed chocoholics tomorrow, and I've got this idea that while they're all concentrating on the chocolate that I'll be producing, I'll hit them from the side with a chocolate ice cream. So I'm going to put, pop in a little milk and I'm going to pop in a lot of cream. 350 grams of sugar. I'm meeting these guys tomorrow. Basically, you know, they are, for better word, the Cadbury Brigade. And I'm going to try and introduce real chocolate to them. And this is all in my campaign and my quest to see if I can get other people who really traditionally eat the chocolate that's been served up to them to think again and think about eating real chocolate. I am 
creaming the eggs and the sugar. I'm going to take a little bit of the hot cream mixture and I'm going to slip it into the sugar and eggs and mix it in, and then I'll add that back to the main bulk of the cream. And I'm doing that so it doesn't curdle, basically. If they, they don't like this, then I will be amazed. I'll tell you what, just to evoke a little bit of sweetness, because these guys like sweet, and good old vanilla. Just a little dollop. So now I'm going to stir in. Oh, that's nice. Look at that go. I'm just going to stir in chocolate. OK. I want to stir it really well until the chocolate's really mixed into the cream. It's thick and beautiful. I'm going to whack it into the ice cream maker and get back to work. Nice. Willie's plans to get everybody eating real chocolate start today, with the first meeting of his group of chocoholics. Well, that's if the family ever managed to leave Prescott House. Dad, bring the ice cream, can you? The car's falling apart. Come on, darling. Tanya! What? Do you think, do you think what I'm wearing is all right? Oh, hang on a minute. It's driving me crazy. I'm trying to do ten things at once. Tanya, William, let's go! Chop, chop! Oh, there you are, darling. There's ten people in the group Willie's recruited.